Hello everyone, it's John from Double Sleeved here, and welcome to the first of the Arena Zendikar Rising videos. We're finally here. It's taken what feels like forever, but in actual fact it's probably only been a few weeks. We've been hearing about this set for a while, the hype's been building. It's finally on Arena. It was on um, the back end of yesterday here in the UK, um, but I, I, I stayed away so that we could enjoy it together. Um, so, make sure you like this video and you subscribe to the channel. It's boring and it's and it's rubbish to hear that, but it, you know it's just important to say it. And um, it really helps us out. So, what we're going to do today is instead of doing a draft and craft, initially... I'm trying to think of a fun name. We're going to do a, a sealed, um, a sealed Zendikar Rising, uh, and we're going to have beer with it. And I was toying with the name Brew and Brew. It's a bit rubbish, <laughs> so you know it is what it is. But we are going to be doing some sealed. It is two thousand gems. Luckily, I've got up to the six thousand gem mark, so we can do a couple potentially. We have to get all the way to the six wins mark. In order to um, to get our money back, which is tough, it's sunny sixteen hundred. I mean, you know, we do in a, you know basically get two hundred back straight away. But we're going to do a sealed for a couple of reasons. One, I love pre-release, and I miss pre-release so much in these troubling times that this just gives us that little bit of escapism. Um, it's a good way of seeing the cards without having that huge stress of what you're going to do with them. And we get to have a little look through what we what we pull, and um, we get to build a bit of a deck out of it. So here we go. And whilst we're doing that, we have got this guy, the old Pride and Joy, which uh, is a vocation from um, Hebden Bridge, and it is a a crisp, hoppy pale ale. Hop forward flavor, no less. Um, a classic American style pale ale, very crisp and hoppy and aromatic. Robust hop flavors, layered over a balanced multi backbone. If that's what you're looking for. Initially soft to the palate, pride and joy, builds to a generous but clean bitterness. Flavors and aromas of mango, citrus, earthy pine, tropical fruit, and blueberry. We're just covering all the bases there, so we'll give this a little try. Smells good. Oh yeah. Oh, that's my cup of tea. Or beer. It's 5.3%, so it's certainly not to be messed around with. And we get ourselves a little swamp. Okay, are you ready? Three minutes in, we're actually going to have a look at some cards. Hokey dokey. So, straight away... We'll go through each of these guys. We've got ourselves Nimble Trap Finder, which is a which is a rogue, um, which is important for a number of things. When it enters the battlefield under your con control this turn, so it can't be blocked if we had another of the party, which is one of the cleric rogue wizard or warrior, enter the battlefield under this under this your control this turn. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party which is one of each of those four. Creatures you control gain whenever this card deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Okay, interesting. So it's a two mana, two, one, with some party-based tomfoolery. Archon of Amiria. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Non-basic lands your opponent control enter the battlefield tapped. It's a two three for three, but it is a flyer. Rolling vortex, a two mana enchantment at the beginning of each player's upkeep. Rolling vortex deals one damage to them. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast that spell, it deals five damage. And then for one red, our opponents can't cast spells. Well, would you look at that? Luminarch Aspirant. It's a, it's a 1 1 for 2. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a 1 1 counter on target creature. So that is also a cleric. 
Then we've got Thieving Skydiver. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, gain control of target artifact. If the artifact is an equipment, attach it. So that could be interesting. However, we have also got this one. It's a three green green elemental, and you know how I feel about elementals. Its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Non-token creatures you control are forest lands in addition to other types. Okay, so that's our rare pool. We now get to see all of our common and uncommons. So straight away I'm thinking blue-white flyers, but I like that green card. So we'll see how we feel. Uh, so we need to look at the sort of our mana curve, and we need to be sort of considering some things. Okay. So we've got a 1-1 a one, one flyer, for one, that has a little bit of upside later on, which is a cleric. We've got a warrior that buffs creatures, a 1-2 for one. We've got a little 3-1 for two. Okay, so these jewels are pretty good. So they're they're MDFs, as I am calling them, modal double faces. Um, so it's a land on one side, and on the other side is a spell. This guy is um, a creature heavy damage dealer for two, or a planes that comes in tapped. So I, I guess like if you're going to play planes. You might as well play this guy, like take this guy instead. Um, that's the cleric that we've seen. We've got a two one for two that becomes a two three on on their turn, so a decent blocker maybe. I mean, tapping a creature and drawing a card is a bit rubbish for two. We've seen it. Okay, so. 3-3 three, three that draws both players a card and is a wizard. Enchanted creature can't attack or block and can't be activated. That's a good little shutdown card. Whenever you gain life the first time, create a cat. Okay. Okay. I'm not seeing any lifelink as of yet. But that could be interesting if we can get some. And look at that cat token. Can we just talk about that cat token for a second? Um, okay, a 4 4 for 5 with landfall. Now, landfall is going to be a really key mechanic, um, certainly in some colours more than others. But when a land enters a battlefield under your control, tap target creature. Could be good. So that's our white. Mm. From a flying perspective, we've only got the two. Oh, we managed to pull two of these guys. Excellent. So I'm not... I mean, I like the the healer. Pretty cool. But I'm not overwhelmed. So we've got two of these guys. For one mana... Enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Okay. I mean, the beer is definitely great. So that's going to make this whole experience pretty good. I mean, a one mana... Tap for a couple of turns is... I mean, it's not even instant speed, so... Although it does stay tapped. So that, yeah. Um, okay. So a minus four, zero... Draw a card if you've got a wizard. Mm, and we've got two of those. Mm. Okay, so we've got a rogue. A flying rogue. Whenever Merfolk Wind Robber deals damage to a player, that player mills a card... You can sacrifice it to draw a card only if you've got eight or more in your graveyard. Mm, okay. I mean, a 1-1 one, one flyer for one, again, not a problem. Um, and it draws a card if need be, um, you'd assume. This guy can give Hexproofs with two or zero three 3 for one. Um, we've got a 1-1 one, one flasher. When it ends the battlefield, up to one target creature gets at minus two, zero, and it control and mills. Mm, okay, we've got this this dual this this MDF situation. Oh, we've got two of those. That's good. 
Creature your opponent control, get minus two zero. Hmm, for two. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Okay, so it's a one three for two. When it blocks a creature, the creature doesn't untap. Hmm. Okay, negates okay. It's very specific. Um a little bit too specific, but it's it's okay if you want to go down the control route. Okay, we've got a two one for two wizard. Oh, look, you need to pay six to return an insult or sorcery. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, draw two cards for three mana. Potentially draw three for six. Crikey, these cards ain't great, are they? When have you cast a kicked spell? It becomes a five five. I mean, you really have to plow your deck with with the uh, with kick spells for that to work. It's a two three for three. The stalker gets plus one zero until the end of the turn. Can't be blocked. I know it's sort of party heavy. It's a three three for four that scries a lot potentially. Okay, rogue uh, tribal here. Tap another rogue and it can't be blocked. And it, it draws a card. It's okay. It's okay. And then we've got... Okay, so potential flyer. So, I'm yet to properly evaluate the format to know whether or not this is sort of what we need to expect out of the, the white and blue colours. But it feels very slow and very underpowered. Um... Moving on to black then. So we've got a, uh, a one mana return type card from your graveyard to your hand. Or four mana two cards. Mm. Destroy a creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost two or less. Okay. So one, okay, a one mana sorcery speed destroy creature. Or a four mana late game destroy it. Don't matter what his mana cost is, is okay. There will definitely be some one and two mana creatures that we need to destroy. I've got my my peanuts. Don't worry, everyone. A two mana destroy target, target creature or enchantment, and then lose life. I've got no problem with that again. So a bit of bit of control. Removal is going to be pretty important. I'd have, I'd have said. Okay, so we've got a flying life link for two. That's uh, that's so black so far is feeling pretty good. Okay, a party heavy life gain life um, loss style card. So yeah, like that. Put a one one counter and give a minus one minus one at instant speed for two mana. Again, don't dislike it. Whenever you gain life, opponents lose to lose a life. I think black's looking pretty strong. Again, that's that's not ideal. Putting discarding two cards, yeah, later on could be okay. Milling a card is uh, not great, but it is what it is. And then a bit of life, life gain, life loss. Okay, we've got a two-one flash flyer for three that mills. Interesting. Okay, so four mana, look at four cards, put two in your hand, two on the, the bottom of your library, two lose life, lose two life. Mm. And then we jump straight up to six mana for a vampire rogue that could give minus four, minus four. And we've got another life loss, life gain. But for six mana. Yikes. Okay, so black isn't terrible. And that's saying something. Okay. Oh, we like this. Okay, so straight away, red is kicked off with a one mana, zero one elemental, obviously. Land for whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, it becomes a two three until end of turn. So on your turn, it's a two three. Then we've got one of these guys, which is um, 
one mana, deals one damage to a target. If it would die this turn, exile it. Yeah, okay. Destroy a land. It puts another land out. Draw a card. I'm not sure what level of good lands are in this deck, in this set, like significantly in, in draft uh, or in sealed for that to really be too much of a, of a, of a good card. When it enters the battlefield, discard a card and draw a card. Yep, fine. 2 1 wizard. Yep, okay. 2 2 for 2. When it attacks, a warrior synergy stops someone from blocking potentially. Yep, okay. A 1 2 with trample. Whenever it attacks, we get plus 1 0 and turn. Of turn for each creature in your party. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so a two mana, three, two, and, and scry at instant speed. So there's like an infuriate, I think, for one mana um, in the previous um, rotation. Royal Eruption, kicker five. So there's a two mana deal three damage, sorcery speed. Mm, it's okay. Um, or an, a, a seven mana. Ugh. Seen that one. Then we've got first piece of equipment. Okay, so a two mana plus two zero. But it's three to equip. Okay, bit of pump. Don't mind that. Turn two, turn three situation potentially. I don't mind two mana, discard a card, draw two cards if you had to. Destroy an artifact could be helpful. Deals two damage to a creature. That's a bit expensive. Okay, four mana, two, two. When it enters, it deals X damage. What X is the number of creatures in your party? Yeah, okay. And then we've got a couple of these guys. A four, five for five. When it enters the battlefield, you may return a land you control. When you do, it deals two damage to each opponent. Yeah, okay. So red's alright. I wouldn't mind playing red. Search a land for a basic land, reveal it, and put it in your hand. If this spell was kicked, search a library for two lands instead of one. In your hand. I mean, I'd like it to go on the battlefield, but I guess it's one mana. Okay, so 1-1 one, one counters... Fine. Another 1-1 one, one counter. Okay, that's pretty good. Creature fights a creature you don't control. Instant speed for 3. And it's also a land. A 3-3 three, three for 3. Yep, yeah, fine. Right, landfall. Whenever a land in spell for new control, put 1-1 one, one counter. Okay, that's a good card. Another landfall. Well, I think we know where this is going to go if there's if there's many more landfall. Okay, it's a card draw 3, 2 for 4. We know what this guy is. Okay, 1-1 one, one synergy. Okay, and then we've got some dual cards. Mm, rogues. And wizards. And then we've got an expensive equipping knife. Uh, an expensive knife. It's good for warriors. It can't attack or block unless an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. I mean, that's not a bad card. It's a 6-6 six, six for three mana that may eventually do something. Okay, well, I feel disappointed, I'm going to be honest with you. This doesn't feel like a great selection of cards. I am most attracted to the idea of red, green. If I'm honest with you. Uh, 
Okay. In fact, we're going landfall, so I am going to want more lands. Okay, so we can start by stripping out some of these cards. I don't know how important life gain is going to be, so I think we'll get rid of him, even though he's a rare. Um, Creatures-wise, you always want to make sure you've got a decent number of creatures. We have certainly got a decent number of creatures. That's technically a land, as is that, so not so much of a problem. That fetches us a land, which might be useful. Um, so we're running sort of 18 lands. I don't hate that. Anything else I'm not sure about? What does my party look like? Because I've got a dog, I've got a wizard, a warrior, a warrior, a warrior, a warrior, a warrior, a wizard. You know what? I think we're going to be better off pulling in the warrior guy. I can't help but like this card, and I don't know why. It's a late game 6-6. Six, six. And early on I've got some uh, some discard that I wouldn't mind getting rid of it if I had to. Um, and with with the um, this iridescent horn beetle, I don't know if I am that bothered by how many I've got. Um, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Is that that good? Two mana to go 2-1 I think I think I think I think we will I'm just going to run that you know what? We can't do that without <clears throat> without naming this thing. Gruelands Original. Here we go. 24 minutes. It's definitely hoppy. I've got a couple of these um, vocation beers. We brew bold beers. That's not easy to say. We brew bold beers. From our hilltop in Yorkshire. In Yorkshire. We'd rather set benchmarks than trends only making beer that we're proud to put our name on. You know what? I'm happy with that. Plus 74. Good luck. The goodest of luck. Let's begin and see what happens with some, you know, nuts. So, we've had some good run in our last. Uh, Yeah, 
in our last drafting. Let's see how it plays out now. I mean, this is a pretty good aggro start, I would say. Nice. I mean, this is a pretty, uh, pretty swift constructed deck at this stage. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that that was pretty comprehensive. <laughs> God, I think we're going to see landfall as a really powerful mechanic, and clearly that was a very lucky opening hand uh, in terms of the the aggro start but hey we've just moved up we've doubled our gem winnings this is now has only cost the same as a draft um but we need to obviously get our money back let's hope that we get just as good a start this time this is where i draw my top end or no lands or something ridiculous Yeah, I'll keep that. We've got this guy, so it's a two-two because of its itself is a warrior. I'm gonna keep that as a as a spell. I'm interested to see how quick other decks are, because although the last guy we played, this is obviously Clavel, the last person we played was um, slow. I'm going to have to read a lot of their cards as well. So it can't block. But it can be cast from the graveyard. Okay. So that's Fights, another creature. I wouldn't gain anything because there's only because the party is the individual types and because they're both warriors I don't gain anything. I think I will let it go through <clears throat> because I've got more The question will be do I play this as a land in order to get the canopy bail off out? Okay, three colours. Interesting. Well, I get to draw a card. This should be a land. It's not, but that's okay. And neither's that. Um, it is a wizard, though, so we're going to do this. Oh yeah, we don't have enough. That's fine. So I think the best thing to do... Is... Attack. Happy to trade. Because it's not, that's not getting any bigger. And that's just a 3-3 three, three for 3. And they've paid... Three and I got card off it, and then when we'll do that, I 
So I'm going to instant speed kill this, and it will get exiled um, next turn. If I draw a land, I can also canopy Baloth. I feel like removing that threat is probably the the greater need than playing additional lands. I can always play Canopy Bale off next turn. Um, Okay, so that's interesting. Which exiles it, which is fine. There was a debate as to whether or not to do the Canopy Bail Off. So I think what we want to do is that... Because that they, they might pump that up, and it's vigilance, which is fine. Okay. How many do I have to choose? Two. That's not a bad little card, is it? So if I double block it, I lose I lose the uh, the bail off. So we attack with that, they double block it. Or they don't. Okay, so we've got a number of blockers out. <clears throat> So I'm not particularly worried. I think lands are now going to be the thing, as who can draw the most. Only one card in my hand. Three in theirs. That's going to become a 5-6. Not bothered by either of those. Okay, it's not a bad card. Um, I need to stop. Be wise to kill both of those, really.
So next turn... I have one creature in my party. If I can draw another party card... Okay. So I'm aware that we're now kind of losing the race because they've got a flyer. But Okay, I'm not really sure what that was. So if I send all this, the point I've got here is that can just do me next turn, basically. Nothing's got trample. If they put anything down that's a member of their party, then that's unfortunately it. I mean, a vigilance flyer is is that strong. Um, we've got to attack because they've got us next turn and they, they, they've just got us next turn there isn't really a a side note it just is what it is Okay, we can kind of get a feel for how these these games are going to go. We're now we're now having a little bash at this guy. If you can see that, yeah. it's called life and death, I think. Apt, you might say. Um, another of the vocation beers, uh, another IPA. It says fruity and fresh. I would say it is made in my likeness. It is six and a half percent though, so um, don't expect me to understand what's going on. Okay, well one for one. It's happened before. It'll happen again. But just going through this, uh, this is life and death. Three kilos of hops and forty kilos of barley selflessly gave their lives to brew every barrel of this beer. It's a lot to ask. But their reincarnation as this life-affirming IPA makes their sacrifice worthwhile. Life and Death is a ballsy, careful, US-style IPA. Expect flavours and aromas of tropical and citrus fruits with a lingering bitterness set against a smooth malty backbone. We'll soon see on that one. Um, it's a clear mulligan, so we'll keep it. And... B Bjorgi, B B Bergi. 
what we have got is arguably one of the best turn one plays. I think this card will feature in red aggro, it's going to feature in gruel, it's going to feature in like anything that is anything. Um, I'll always hello my opponent. I'm not going to waste my spell on him. That's nice. Another one of these. Obviously I could do 3 damage to it. doesn't get exiled. And it will come back next turn. So I'm going to be doing 2 damage. It's going to be doing 3 damage. Such is life. Hmm. I get to look at one card and he gets to get rid of it. We are going to do is, is mute because that thing is the most annoying thing. The reason I've done that then is because next turn we're going to um, Pyroclastic Helion if we get a land. Wow. Harsh. We're still getting in for a bit of damage, so that's fine. Next turn, I'll trade. Um, I know it will come back out again straight away, but it can't block, so I'm not sure I'm that bothered. <clears throat> I would like to see... Will I trade? No, I won't, because I can just attack and they can't really do a lot about it. So, what have they got in their hand? What's this land? Can you show us this land, please? Okay, we saw that card. Can I see this land, please, Arena? Unbelievable, Jeff. Oh, I like the little touches on this uh, thing. Look at this. Some of these little... Um, what, whatever they're called. Here we go. Okay. Well, that's the game. Didn't think about it, but that was the game. <laughs> Completely didn't read. Did not read the uh, <laughs> the guy can't block situation. That was a good. Uh, I feel like when you get the lands in, you get you know the curve works. Not we've got a pack. Look, look at that. We'll open that together in a minute. I think that's only <clears throat> it's only fair. It's definitely stronger. You can you can feel well over a percent stronger than the uh, Pride and Joy. Life and Death's a little bit extreme, isn't it? Oh, I like these. I like <clears throat> I like these cards. What's really good about these cards is that they can put one ones on themselves. Oh, and then that comes out.
I think we're going to do that. I've missed a point of damage there, I know, but... Part of this is seeing how... John, you idiot! So, I am a fool. Okay, so... I am an idiot. That is true. So, if I discard a card, it'll be... Ashaya. Sounds bad to do that, but such is life. How can I, how can I, how can I, how can I do that? So, this this guy is a bit of a risk, for sure. We're not going to block it. I'm going to go down to four. Interesting. So what this does is create a 1-1, one, one, which will then chump the Canopy Bailoth. We can't affect the Kite Sail. If we can give it Trample, then good for him. I think that's the game, isn't it? Okay. I've probably given them some outs, but... Okay, so they're going to try and pop away one at a time. So I attack with everything and I do I mean one, two, three, four, five attackers. They're gonna to have to leave two things to block. I think that's it. If they flash something in, then they flash something in. But I 
think I've just got it. Because I don't think they've got lifelink. I'll be a no. Just. Just, just, just. Should have had it much better than that. Misplayed early on. I think the landfall is going to really mess me up because I'm somebody who likes to put lands down first. Um, which is really bad practice. And if you're new to the game or you're learning or you're good and you want to get better. Um, you know, absolutely. Whatever you do. Don't just put lands down at the start of your turn like an idiot. Don't play, don't play any cards until like the last point you have to. Um, is like the is the advice that I would give anyone, including myself. Gallus, you know what? We're going to take this because we have plenty of mount of uh, uh, mountains, of forests in the deck, and there it is. So we're playing against blue. Uh, not seen much blue yet. Blue green. And they're going to initially just instant speed on their main phase. They're going to scry two and then draw a card. It's definitely not one mana better than opt. 100% not. Question is... I actually think... Oh, Nelly. Oh. So that's just going to grow and grow and grow. Which is fine. Ooh, that's an uncommon. Wow. 2-4. That's powerful. Okay, they've got a nice art on the Reclaim the Wastes, and they've got themselves a la an island for next turn. And they didn't attack. Okay, so. That thing's just going to get way too big. Now we've got two Dauntless Survivors, which if I can get another Forest, can both land next turn. Um, I'm not bothered by milling anything really in my deck. There's nothing that's like massively important. Okay. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's an absolutely, fundamentally broken card in this format. I would say we're at a stage where that card is basically... That's the game. I, I would almost scoop if you know he, he can he can. Unbelievable. Okay, so. We need to wait until that thing attacks us. I've got plenty of cards in my deck.
So it's going to kill that. I mean, it's an interesting tactic, I guess. It doesn't have trample. That's annoying. Three mana. That's not bad. Three mana destroy artifact enchantment or creature flying. Yeah, okay. If that wasn't on the board, I'd probably have had the game sorted by now. We're at a point though where it plays a land and I mill three is gonna is gonna end the game. I'm not looking at what could mm. at this point <clears throat> I need them to attack, but they're just gonna mill me until I have no cards. Because that can just be chumped. Okay, so a mythic, excellent. Next instant sorcery gets doubled. I can't even invite two, four, six. Yeah. There's just not a lot I can do at this point. I mean, what have I lost? I've pretty much lost everything. I haven't lost my big 6-6. Six, six. Um, this is ridiculous. I put loads of lands in there for uh, obvious land-based reasons. If I attack with everything, he kills the Stomper. And I kill pretty much everything else. No. I don't, I don't even kill everything else. That's the problem. I mean, he, he'll just happily wait six turns. Mm. No. Okay. Well, you know, the clock's really heavily on now, isn't it? So. Oh, no. There's the golem. That's a shame. What can I, what can I get? I can't win, even if I attack with everything. But... What's the number? One. Okay. Interesting. I 
Yeah, okay. Double blocking, fair enough. Clear the board down a little bit, I guess. The player land and I lose, that's that's it really. I assume there is no land. Interesting. And I'll just lose the game. I mean, he could literally just take all of it. But, um, what are you going to do? Shan't, uh, I shan't let it go on any longer than it needs to. I mean, I did let it go on a lot longer than it needed to, but you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so. I don't feel like we had a lot in that. We don't have um, creature removal, which would have sorted that bloody crab out. It's a card I, lo I would love. I think it's great. Um... Yeah, there's some serious difference between four, five, and six wins. So we need to really pull our pull our fingers out and and get this show on the road. Um, Gruel definitely isn't within my kind of comfort zone. Uh, I would have loved to have seen more blue white flyers. I would have loved that, but it doesn't feel like the set for that. Landfall is going to be like the biggest um, Helgawind, uh, the biggest. Success. Um, ooh. I'm gonna keep it again. I get a draw. Oh, that! I don't know if there's anything else that's more annoying than that noise of that that dog in this game because it just it like grates me. And I don't know if you can hear it as well as I can. Um, I don't know how I played with the audio. You probably just got my dulcet tones. Oh, because it licks its like lips or something. This thing. So Helga wins obviously having a tough time. It sniffs and it does things and this is good viewing, isn't it? This is this is the content you guys all tuned in for. Me staring at seven cards, waiting for Helga Wind to sort their life out. An hour in. I wish I could uh, I mean I'm not the I don't think I'd win the game if they don't play anything. Stop talking. You should just be able to mute that. In my honest opinion. So I haven't even been able to say yes to my cards. I think they just get an automatic yes. Oh no, they just decided to be annoying. I think. Yeah. Good for them. Okay. Well, I don't really want to turn to Relic Axe.
Well, turn two tormenting voice. Sucking the Jurega visionary. Jurega or Juraga? Potato, potato, some might say. I reckon I could be bigger, you know, on the screen. How much fun's that? Not too big? I'm obviously kidding. That's way too big. Um, you know what? They've played a defensive creature. I'll play my warrior, and then I got next turn. I've got the axe, and it will go straight on her. This uh, first sealed was all about learning a bit of how the game plays, how people are playing, the, what they're choosing, and this could well be somebody quite new. This Helga Wind. I don't think you get a. Um, a rank in this, per se. Could they counter that? Oh. Well, that's nice. So what's this? A one mana counter spell. Nice. Well, here we go. If they've got another counter spell, I was going to say that would be quite sad. They might have a destroyed creature though. And if that's the case, I mean, a 6 5, pretty much every turn is. Not to be argued with. Yeah, they've definitely got some sort of... Hmm. It's a rare. That's not a bad rare, I guess. So at four mana, five mana, what are they going to do with it? Teema? Beautiful. Elemental colours they are. Oh, nothing. That's nice. Okay. They've obviously got an instant spell. That is a that is a great spell. Really great. Good on them, you know, I say good on them. So we're hoping to draw a land, basically. Wow. So they've really got some... Uh... Some tricks there, haven't they? <clears throat> So, yes, yeah, so this is interesting. So, basically, we want to go. Mm. 
I mean, if they've got all the spells, that is unbelievable. So this person's like clearly, clearly seen that this. Uh, this game is all about those combat tricks, and fair, I mean, fair play. I'm loving that. I am loving that. I'm not sure that was the right thing to do. To be honest with you. Okay, so I need to get rid of that. Um So there you go, guys. Sadness falls. This very slow and clearly competent enough individual just had what it took. Um, dejected isn't the word. Sad. Maybe. But you know what? Look at this. We've got a couple of cards. And, and, you know what we're going to do? Because you guys have watched to the end. And I bet you there is not a single person that will watch to the end. Um, let's see some of these cards. Shatter Skull Charger. Look at that. Trample Haste. 4-3. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What else do we get? Look at that little thing. Destroy all non-land permanents, or it's a planes. Seagate Stormcaller, we've seen that one, that's great. And our last little pack of Rooney. That's a cool card. That's a really good card, I'd love to build something around that. Um, there you go. You've seen us go. We've managed to get ourselves a few gold coins, which is nice. Um, we got, you know, a little bit of money back, which is nice, considering we've got a load of cards. So we can't complain. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I'm probably going to go grab a couple more beers and um, bash out another seal. So if uh, if you see another video, this should be out on Friday. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, you may see another video on Saturday or Sunday. So, hey enjoy those videos let me know that you enjoy them please i really appreciate it and i will see you guys in the next one bye